is an examination of the hidden human condition. This is the Hidden Killers Podcast. The Hidden Killers Podcast. With Tony Bruski. Oh, it's the case that's not going to go away anytime soon. And I think as sad as it is, is eventually going to bring some closure, some sense of answers to a lot of families who have a loved one that has an unsolved murder surrounding them in Long Island, in Las Vegas, and in South Carolina. Joining us uh, right now is uh, retired FBI Special Agent Jennifer Coffin-Daffer. Uh, I'm just going to throw it to you and ask you what has been standing out to you from your perspective as former FBI uh, as some of uh, the most disturbing or damning things or surprising things that we've learned in the last week or so about Rex. Well, well, for me, it's certainly these other uh, properties that he either owns or has a timeshare, right? We know about the Las Vegas timeshare and what a perfect place for a sexual uh, predator uh, that loves to prey on women who operate in the evening hours. What a perfect place. Yeah, without Las a doubt. Vegas, you know. Um, so I thought that was very interesting, his selection of, of timeshare locations. They need to be digging through uh, their files. They are digging through their files. They've already said unsolved murders of, of women, ladies who are working in escort type mm -hmm. profession because that's what he focused on. Yeah. And um, the problem is, I think there's going to be so many. Yeah. Uh, but hopefully, you know, with DNA advancements now and... Uh, knowing his MO yeah. uh, that's been exposed in terms of the tying up of the bodies, you know, in three spots, uh, using uh, burlap uh, to hide his choices of location. Hopefully they could start narrowing that down and see if he's linked. Sure. Uh, Tony, of course, the other is that he has property and so does his brother in South Carolina, rural South Carolina. Mm -hmm. And what I most found interesting about that was the avalanche, the unique Chevy avalanche uh, that he used during the commission of these crimes is there. He didn't get rid of it. Yeah. Uh, nor would I have expected him to. Uh, first of all, there could be damning evidence in there, uh, you know, blood, fluid, so on that could have seeped down to the areas that you can't see. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and so maybe they will get lucky. Uh, when they work on that case, the forensics team. And just, I think he just kept it as a trophy. Just think of all those amazing memories for him, yeah. speaking from his mind, yeah. that he could live with that truck there. What else is there though, Tony? How about bodies? <laughs> How about other people? I mean, we just don't know. Yeah, and that's one of the things. I mean, when we look at this case and you go, oh my God, how depraved can one person be? And then we start hearing maybe there's accomplices as well. Like, oh, there's more people like this, possibly. There's the the rumor, and I, I don't know how substantiated any of that is as of right now, but the reports that there may be a female accomplice, some of those reports coming in from harassing phone calls uh, to some of the victims' families of hearing another female on the other line taunting, uh, saying things, hearing a male in the background. Uh do you think there's anything to that? Could that possibly be just, you know, some idiots that are harassing victims of such horrible crimes? Or is there a connection? Because it seems a lot of those things seem to ramp up for these families right before the arrest, almost as if he may have known that the, the police were very much onto him. Okay, Tony, in regard to this female accomplice, of course, we've heard nothing from law enforcement mm -hmm. indicating that. These types of crimes typically, not always, uh, but typically they are committed alone. These are personal. He wants to be in power. He wants to be in control. He doesn't want to share any of that yeah. with an accomplice and certainly not a woman. Mm -hmm. I mean, he is a misogynist. He, you know, a narcissist. I don't think there's any merit to this. This is coming from uh, one of the victim's attorneys, uh, and then he also represents another family. Um, and and he's basing it on some odd things, right? He's basing it on these phone calls that he got that he's not receiving anymore, where he heard a female voice, a male voice, and he says it's connected and, and taunting. But it he's very nebulous. It's very ambiguous 
in terms of exactly who said what and, and recounting those conversations. I didn't, I don't remember that he even recorded them. He recounts them. Mm-hmm. Um, so, and, and so that's why he thinks there's an accomplice. And the other reason he said is because in one of the murders, and again, we don't even know if this one's connected, uh, a baby was found uh, wrapped in a blanket. Yeah. And his point is, is this type of guy wouldn't do that, but a woman would. Well, that is just so ridiculous because yeah. I'm sorry to call him ridiculous, but uh, it, it is because it, he didn't do it. He didn't wrap these women uh, in burlap because he cared about them. He wanted to hide them. He, he was camouflaging them. This was strictly pragmatic. And if it, it is determined that he had anything to do with the child, uh, that was murdered. And again, we don't know any that there is a connection with that one. But if there is, he would have been wanting to hide that child and to, you know, secrete it. Um, you know, I don't even know if that was going to match up with his, this killing, this killer. Yeah. Uh, but I'm not buying at this point, and I've seen nothing to convince me that there's a woman accomplice of his in these murders. The only thing that could come to my mind was like Jeffrey Epstein and Ghislaine Maxwell. And this certainly was not Jeffrey Epstein or Ghislaine Maxwell uh, that we're talking about uh, in terms of an accomplice, a female accomplice uh, trying to help lure things in. I, I, it's If you're reaching out to, to sex workers, you don't necessarily need to have a female make that phone call or, or make that uh, them feel comfortable to be with the, the John that would be reaching out to them. Um, there are a lot of bodies on the beach, and he's been charged with uh, not all of them. There's far more that are there. I believe it's what three or four that he's officially been charged with, uh, with the he's murders. Officially, yeah, he's officially charged with three, Tony, and then there's one that they suspect him of. I just think they had to swoop in and arrest him before they could complete that case. I think there's going to be the the Gilgo four going to be the four, and then they're going to have to look at the other remaining six Mm -hmm. to see if there's any connection. I guess the question is, I mean, how popular of a spot for dumping bodies is Gilgo beach? Uh, (laughs) And and, (laughs) Hey, you want to dump a body? Gilgo is a great place. Uh, Or is is, some of the question is, is it a popular spot to dump bodies? And maybe these are from other cases uh, or are these likely connected uh, to him? Uh, But like you said, they, they got some evidence on some of these enough to make the arrest and more connections are likely to be made shortly thereafter. Yeah, I agree. And I guess in answer to your question, it, it certainly is a popular dumping place because we have 10 bodies, I believe, there. Yeah. I mean, it's just horrible. But I know what your point is, is really, is that because just one person is dumping or or were others? I think it's clear that a body could easily be hidden in this area due to the uh, you know, the terrain and so forth. We know that because of the state of decomposition, these bodies were found in. They were there a long time before they were detected. So from that standpoint, Tony, I think, you know, predators and people who murder look to hide a body. It seems like this was a pretty good spot for that. Do you suspect that we're going to find out about far more murders uh, involving him in more recent days? Uh, obviously, some of these crimes took place in 2010, uh, and then as far as we know at this moment, somewhat dormant, uh, but was he really, is it, are we just not quite uncovered the other, uh, paths of, of his destruction over the last 13 years? Well, you know, it's so interesting. You asked that, um, last minute, uh, last night, literally probably 10 minutes before, uh, it was time to go on, uh, Chris Cuomo, uh, contacted me and uh, I should say his show contacted me, his producers. And there was a woman they, Chris interviewed last night who said in 2015, she was an escort. She ha- was a heroin addict. It was a very dark time in her life. Mm-hmm. And she had a date with uh, Rex. Yes. I've, I've, I've seen her TikTok did video. Catch that? Yes. I have. Yeah. We actually just aired that the other day too. Oh, great. So anyway, the point is, is that, yes, I mean, in 2015, we at least know, and I have no reason not to believe her. She had a lot of details. I think the fact that she was truly an escort, uh, that tells that that's the right MO. If she would have came forward and said, oh, listen, I met him on a dating app, I would have said, eh, 
Yeah. Sorry, you don't fit the profile. She clearly fit the profile and a profile nobody would necessarily be proud of. She's turned her life around. She's hairdresser now, has a child. But, uh, but back then it was a dark time. And she said, you couldn't forget this guy. You, I mean, he's gigantic. Yeah. Uh, you know, been described as ogre-like. Mm-hmm. I mean, just in terms of his presence. Um, so if we're to believe that, Tony, uh, and we know, I believe law enforcement is interviewing another person currently. I have heard that. Mm -hmm. Um, I think there's going to be others that come forward that he never got lured. But the biggest thing, Tony, that I got out of that interview, Mm -hmm. listening to it, was that he asked her to come back to his home. Mm -hmm. And, oh my gosh, doesn't that make sense with the facts we know? The facts that the the wife was always out of town when these uh, uh, crimes were committed. Mm -hmm. The fact that we don't have some hotel room that was full of blood everywhere or signs of a struggle or screaming or on surveillance camera going in and out. You know, this would have been the private, comfortable uh, den that he could kill in and never get caught and then transport later in that avalanche. Uh, You know, so it makes a lot of sense now uh, as to possibly where these crimes were committed. It's going to be very interesting to uh, to continue to follow that. This is an examination of the hidden human condition. This is the Hidden Killers Podcast with Tony Bruschi.